Hello, everyone, and welcome to our presentation, Japan's Romantic Baroque Culture. First of all, let me thank you for watching this event organized by Abrademi, the Brazilian Manga Association, and Brazil's Mie Kenjin Cultural Association. My name is Gabriela Hilario, and I'm a member of Abrademi. Our association aims to spread the Japanese culture and history across the world, especially Brazil. I must say we are very thankful that we are reaching this goal. Today, our speaker is Professor Cristiane Sato. She has a degree in law from the University of Sao Paulo, and she's the author of the book, J-Pop, The Power of Japanese Pop Culture. Professor Sato was a JICA scholar in 2016 at Kanazawa University, and she was a speaker at Japanese universities, entities, embassy, and consulate. In addition to all of that, she also teaches Japanese history, an annual course offered by Abrademi since 2017. So let's welcome Professor Sato. Thank you, Gabi, and hello, everyone. The presentation you are going to watch was made online a few weeks ago in Portuguese because our usual audience is Brazilian. However, probably because it is related to popular subjects of contemporary Japanese culture, such as manga, lolita fashion, and takarazuka musicals, we had several foreign applicants who asked us to translate this presentation into a more accessible language. So we decided to record this version in English. Japan's Romantic Baroque culture is part of a series of classes about the history of fashion in Japan, organized by Abrademi and Brazil's Mie Kenjin Cultural Association. Let's begin speaking about the period Baroque art was developed in the Western world and what was happening in Japan during that period. I'm specifically talking about the 18th century. During that period, Japan was isolated from the rest of the world. Foreigners were expelled from the country and the Japan's ports were closed to foreign ships. The 18th century in Japan is the middle of the Edo period. The third shogun Tokugawa Iemitsu enacted the Sakokurei, the isolation policy of Japan in 1635, which would last until 1854. It meant that in the 18th century, Japan knew little about the West and the West also knew little about Japan. In a study published by Cornell University in 1997, Edo and Paris, Urban Life and the State in the Modern Era, a simple data comparison about the world's two major cities in the 18th century reflects that situation. In 1750, the population of Edo, nowadays Tokyo, was 1,060,000 people. The population of Paris was 570,000 people, and Edo had almost twice the area of Paris. So Edo was the biggest city in the world, but because of Japan's isolation policy, the world didn't know it. I won't speak further about the Edo period, because the subject is studied in detail in Abrademi's History of Japan classes. Those who already follow us know this period well. So let's see the period and the place where Rococo art was developed. Europe in the 18th century, more specifically France in the 18th century. Those were the times of the absolute monarchy founded by King Louis XIV, now called Ancien Régime or the Old Regime. Louis XIV, successfully managed to unify power in France, disputed by other influential nobles and cardinals of the Catholic Church, by becoming a dictator himself, claiming the divine right of kings to rule. To get the support of nobles in exchange of their abdication of maintaining private armies, 
Louis XIV created a system of granting favors and high salaries to his supporters, offering them a luxurious and easy life in a gigantic new palace, far from their opponents in Paris, the Palace of Versailles. He implemented a favoring policy to nobles and clergy by granting privileges, the popular take there, give here system, to centralize power. He raised taxes to support spendings with wars and the luxury, the extravagant lifestyle, and a complex rigid etiquette to control the court at Versailles. The most important favor granted to nobles and clergy was tax exemption. They paid no taxes. Hence the importance of having a title of nobility or clergy, even not being actually rich. Economically speaking, the ancien regime was totally dependent on taxation of the actual productive part of the society, peasants, tradesmen, bankers, the common people. Throughout the 18th century, people paid increasingly taxes due to excess of privileged bureaucrats, luxuries of the court, and wars against other countries. After 150 years of growing economic and social distortions, the absolute monarchy system collapsed in the violent French Revolution of 1789. But life for the privileged classes was undeniably good. When the system collapsed in the French Revolution, a sense of nostalgia of the ancien regime immediately arose in the 19th century. A famous quote from from Prince Talleyrand reflects that feeling of the times. He said, whoever did not live in the 18th century before the revolution doesn't know the sweetness of life. From then on, Rococo became a symbol of that sweet lifestyle lost in the French Revolution. Rococo art was about luxury, escapism, pleasure and artificial beauty. Reality was hard and ugly, and Rococo aimed the opposite of reality. The word Rococo comes from the French word rocaille, which means a shell, a curved thing. Rococo style avoids straight lines and right angles. Its main feature is ostentatious ornamentation of wealth, exhibitionism, the idea of more is more. Because of that, Rococo art required high skilled artists and craftsmen, and it allowed the development of the haute artisanat or les autres métiers, and it also depicts fanciful, pleasant, and romantic themes. Here we can see The Swing by Jean Honoré Fragonard, one of the most representative painters of the Rococo style, which captures with humor and grace the light spirit enjoyed by the old aristocracy. Today, it is difficult to realize the total impact of Rococo style in the 18th century, as it encompassed every aspect of life, from architecture to fashion, from decor to cuisine. These images are just a small sample of what Rococo visually was in its glorious times. Nowadays, it's very common to read and hear comments defining Rococo style in depreciative words as old style, decadent, or, and kitsch. The modern depreciation of Rococo comes from the two great 18th century revolutions. First, the French Revolution, in its eagerness to cancel all the culture the revolutionaries understood that represented the ancien regime, ordered the destruction of churches, works of art, and even imposed a new calendar with odd names for months and seasons of the year. Rococo, seen as the style of the, other, of the old monarchy, came to be ridiculed by the rising bourgeois elite. Second, the Industrial Revolution created a prioritization of production in terms of quantity and function of products which led to a progressive abandonment of artistic manufacture and ornamentation. The profuse Rococo aesthetic 
went against the interests of mass production based on simplification. So Rococo had to be criticized. But in Japan, the perception of the Rococo style came to be totally different. Uninfluenced by the 18th century's revolutions, Japanese people discovered the Rococo very lately, only in the 20th century, and they perceived it as the apex of the Western arts without influence from other cultures. They defined Rococo with, wonder, with words of amazement like utsukushi, uh, beautiful, and subarashi, wonderful. It's interesting to point out that even after becoming the world's third largest industrialized economy, Japanese people still value and preserve high craft, craftsmanship in their society, uh, the shokunin tradition. Knowing the difficulties of how things are done and value its resulting product, reveal if an individual is johin, which means a refined, elegant, elevated person, or Gehin, a vulgar, coarse, despicable person. So it is valid to say that because of their own culture, Japanese people ended up valuing Rococo art instead of despising it. Why was Rococo the apex of Western arts? If we simply look at the styles after Rococo, we realize that during the 19th century, the West made only revivals of previous styles. For instance, the neoclassical style was basically an ancient Greece and Roman statues revival. The neo-Gothic style was a Middle Ages revival. And the Victorian or eclectic style was a simplified Baroque Rococo revival mixed with the Renaissance and other old styles. So by the end of the 19th century, the influence of the then recently discovered Japanese aesthetics in Europe, uh, a movement today known as Japanese, finally caused a great aesthetics innovation. And thus came the Art Nouveau style. Art Nouveau means new art in French, an expression to milestone, the breaking of a cycle of old aesthetics repetitions in the Western world. From then on, Western art began to look for innovation and inspiration in foreign cultures, and it still does. It's also important to remember that Rococo art influenced the Enlightenment, Enlightenment philosophy. Julie or the New Eloise by Jean-Jacques Rousseau and the Sufferings of Young Werther by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe were two great bestseller novels influenced by Rococo Romanticism in the 18th century. Their tragic love stories forbidden by the social rules of the Ancien Regime and spread the idea of marriage for love as a natural right. Both books inspired many cases of romantic suicide in Europe, which spanned over a century after their release. Nowadays, marriage for love is the rule in modern societies, but in the 18th century, arranged marriages for family and financial interests were the norm. The romantic marriage was such a revolutionary concept that even America's founding fathers considered important to mention the pursuit of happiness as a natural right in their Declaration of Independence. Quote, all men, are created equal, who are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, among which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Then, in the early 21st century Japan, a new fashion strangely inspired by Western bygone styles merged and took the world by surprise. The girls who enjoyed the freely over accessorized dresses and doll-like makeup called themselves lolitas. It was the rise of the Japanese lolita fashion. The lolita trend was quickly captured in literature and film. Produced in 
2004, the comedy Shimotsuma Monogatari, released in the West with the title Kamikaze Girls, became the Japanese teen cult movie overseas as the Lolita fashion became worldwide known. The most intriguing questions about Lolita fashion are how and why did it flourish in Japan? The place that seems to be the most unlikely for that to happen. How did this, the 18th century European Rococo, transform into that, the 21st century lo Japanese Lolitas? The answer for that is quite amazing. The modern Rococo culture in Japan has its origin in a pop culture phenomenon, which started in 1972. Berusa Yonobara, or The Rose of Versailles, is a shoujo manga series. It was published in weekly chapters from April 1972 to December 1973 in Margaret Girls Comics magazine. It was created by a young manga artist called Ryoko Ikeda, who initially intended to tell the tragic story of Queen Marie Antoinette in comics for girls aged eight to 12 years old. Ryoko Ikeda based her manga on a famous biography written by Austrian Jewish historian Stefan Zweig in 1932. At that time, Zweig's Marie Antoinette's biography was considered quite revolutionary. He dared to write the first biography to humanize the hitherto hated Marie Antoinette, and he was criticized for that. He defended that Marie Antoinette was actually a victim of systematic and exaggerated press defamation, something nowadays called fake news. The mere idea that she was not evil, nor the main cause of France's bankruptcy was so new and unacceptable by many people that the first Brazilian translation omitted Zweig's original book subtitle, The Portrait of an Average Woman. Hatred fed by fake news and propaganda was a very concerning issue for Zweig as a Jewish intellectual. He basically realized that what happened in the past to Marie Antoinette was actually happening to Jewish people in his time. Zweig emigrated to Brazil, fleeing from the Nazi regime persecution, where he lived his last years before committing suicide in 1942. By mixing fiction, pretty drawings, and historical facts, Ryoko Ikeda's manga made a complex story accessible for children without underestimating their ability to understand the dramatic situations lived by her characters. One of the keys for that is something called shoujo manga's emotional expressionism, a technique of graphic representation of a character's thoughts and emotions, which creates strong empathy of readers with manga characters. It demands that little and teenage girls could for example, actually read Marie Antoinette's and Count Persian's thoughts and see their emotional reactions like never before. In that aspect, a shoujo manga can humanize a historical character more than a book or a movie. The story also raised questions about the concept of the arranged marriage for duty, called miai in Japanese, which for centuries has been the rule of marriages in Japan versus the westernized concept of romantic marriage, the marriage for love, or ren aikekon in Japanese. Although many scenes in the Rose of Versailles are fictional, recent researches ended up confirming much of what that 70s manga already portrayed. Encoded letters from Marie Antoinette and Count Fersen recently deciphered with the help of laser scanners and x-rays, published in two books written by Evelyn Farr, revealed that the fiction depicted in Ikeda's manga was not far from the reality. But in 1972, Margaret Magazine's editor pointed out to Yoko Ikeda a concerning aspect about serializing Marie Antoinette's story. 
he thought that it would be hard to keep readers following the magazine with a biographical manga because the story's end was already obvious. After all, everyone knows she died in the guillotine. So Ikeda's solution was to create a fictional main character to add action, drama, and unpredictability to the story. And a girl named Oscar was born. Count Vernier de Jargeis, an aristocratic general worried about having only daughters and no son to inherit his military rank and family title, decides to raise his newborn girl as a boy and names her Oscar. Oscar grows up thinking she's a boy and she's educated for a military career. At 14 years old, she becomes the Queen's Guard's youngest commander. Called Lady Oscar, it's from her perspective that the manga tells the life of Marie Antoinette and the events of the French Revolution. The roles of Versailles' main characters are Oscar de Jargeis and André Grandier. Oscar is a woman raised as a man. She becomes the commander of the Royal Guards and Marie Antoinette's friend and bodyguard, acting then like the most loyal samurai. She secretly falls in love for fashion in her teens, but he sees her only as a friend. And that situation causes Oscar a gender identity crisis. She decides to quit the Royal Guards, which was composed by nobles, and she's transferred to the French Guards, where she has to deal with commoner soldiers, what makes her better understand the difficulties of people's lives. She falls in love with André in adult age and for idealism ends up leading the storming of the Bastille, adopting then the attitude of a ronin. André Grandier is the Jarjai's housekeeper's grandson. He was raised with Oscar since childhood and becomes her valet, her secretary, butler, and bodyguard, a position which grants him access to the court, although being a commoner. He's also Oscar's best friend and male figure. Andrea secretly falls in love for Oscar in his teens, but she sees him as a brother, as he can't declare his love for Oscar. Although living with her, he becomes totally devoted to her to the point that he loses a knife fighting for her. When she starts to return his love, they realize they're living the same frustrating situation the Queen and Count Fersen live, for they sincerely love each other, but they can't ever get married due to social class segregation rules. Considering that nowadays there are many women who work outside while their husbands take care of home and children, Oscar and André anticipated in 50 years the contemporary couple with inverted social roles. They are presented as opposite halves of a balanced whole, like like and shadow, yin and yang. And they portrayed a modern romantic ideal of a relationship based on friendship among the equals. In the story, Oscar and André are the embodiment of French Revolution's ideals of equality and fraternity, but they don't have freedom, which is what would enable them the pursuit of happiness. The choice to fight for freedom ultimately makes royalist Oscar become a revolutionary. And so I tried to quickly summarize more than 1,700 manga pages by telling two powerful love stories in the turbulent times of the French Revolution. The Rose of Versailles became an immediate hit, and its lasting impact turned a shoujo manga into the most influential novel of post-war Japan. Perceiving this unique phenomenon in contemporary Japanese culture, prize the Japanese writer Seiko Tanabe once declared that girls' manga acquired literary status thanks to the Rose of Versailles. The impact of the Rose of Versailles in Japan and overseas can be estimated by considering, for example, that in the last 50 years, it humanized and popularized Marie Antoinette's image, starting a historical review, which is still in progress. 
fictional characters Oscar and Andrea became modern romantic icon, icons. The adaptation of the story for theatrical musical caused an enormous increase in attendance to now worldwide, worldwide famous Takarazuka Review. The story's popularity turned Versailles in France, a must visit for tourists from all over the world. And the beauty inspired by the manga artwork ended up influencing aesthetics, fashion, and behavior in contemporary Japan. The Rose of Versailles helped spread in the Japanese concept of kawaii beauty. Usually translated simply as cute, the word kawaii also means pretty. Kawaii defines a girly type beauty, a youthful beauty, a delicate woman who features eyes proportionately large in relation to the face and who expresses a childish femininity. Examples of what kawaii visually means can be seen in Marie Antoinette's manga depiction and in the faces of Japanese actors uh, Aoi Kawakana and Australian singer Olivia Newton-John. By the way, in this picture, she was convincingly playing the part of, high, of a high school teenager in the musical Grease when she was actually 30 years old. Begin also means beauty or beautiful person. But differently from kawaii, the word bijin defines a mature beauty, an athletic woman with eyes proportionately small in relation to the face and who expresses an androgynous femininity. Rose of Versailles Oscar, Japanese actress Keiko Kitagawa and South African actress Charlize Theron are visual examples of the bijin type beauty. The Rose of Versailles also popularized in Japan the image of Marie Antoinette as the Western princess model, the ultimate example of beauty, elegance, and good manners. Japanese women are generally well-versed in Oriental etiquette, thanks to social education and the practice, the practice of the tea ceremony. However, little used to Western lifestyles from our occasions, Japanese sometimes confuse cliches shown in mangas and TV soap operas and eventually end up making faux pas. Mrs. Minako Imada, a Japanese lady raised in the European society, developed a career teaching Western etiquette to Japanese VIPs organizing official banquets for the Japanese government and published a manga book on etiquette for young girls. Learning skills to become a polite lady or a nohime-sama, a princess, became a popular women's aspiration in Japan, inspired by a cherished but unreal manga image of Marie Antoinette. Another curious Behavioral changing in the Japanese society refers to weddings at Christian churches in Japan. Until the 1970s, very few weddings were performed at churches in Japan, which was consistent with the fact that less than 3% of the Japanese population is Christian. But from the 1980s onwards, there has been an accelerated growth in church weddings without an apparent cause considering that the Christian population in Japan has not increased at the same rate weddings did. It is speculated that the desire for a Western style wedding at a church became a romantic ideal for girls influenced by mangas in their childhood. And in adulthood, they come to fulfill a dream inspired by those stories. Speculations aside, in the Rose of Versailles' most famous scene, Oscar says to Andre that she wants to get married to him at a church, but he dies shortly thereafter. This heartbreaking scene literally put an entire generation of Japanese girls in mourning. Only in 2014, 
Also, Ryokui Kid the console the fans by publishing illustrations of Oscar and Andrea getting married at a church in a special edition of Japan's number one bridal fashion magazine, Zexi, finally making her character's old wish come true. The Rose of Her Sides was an explosive success in Japan. It became the country's best-selling girls' manga in manga's history. Soon after the series finished, fans who felt orphaned with the end of the story began eagerly seeking more information about Versailles, the French Revolution, and anything that could remind them the story. From French classes to Baroque art, the Rose of Versailles craze was named the Beru Bada Boom by the media, and it started the 18th century worship in Japan. The now worldwide famous female only Takarazuka Review produced in 1974 the Rose of Versailles musical and it became a huge success. Up to now, more than 5 million people saw the Rose of Versailles on stage and it became the most successful musical of Takarazuka's 108 years of existence. Fans formed impressive two-week waiting time lines in front of the Takazuka Theater just to buy a reservation for tickets for the Rolls of Versailles. Right after the, the debut performance, a shocking incident occurred. Crazed fans stormed backstage and rushed towards Yuri Haruna, the actress who played Oscar's role, ripping her costume off to take away a piece for souvenir. The Rose of Versailles saved the Takarazuka review of a near bankruptcy, brought new, a huge new audience to the theater, and became the company's most popular musical. Since then, several different versions of the musical have been staged, and performing the Rose of Versailles main characters became the highest roles aimed by all Takarazuka pop star actresses. Statues of Oscar and Andre were built in front of the theater to honor the characters that brought Takarazuka back to the top. In 1979, two productions disclosed the role of Versailles story worldwide, an anime series and a feature film. The animated version of the Rose of Versailles was successfully aired in Japan in 1979. Retitled as Lady Oscar for the international market, the series was exported and broadcasted in Europe, Latin America, Asia, and in the Middle East. Lady Oscar conquered audiences worldwide, and according to an NHK survey of the 20th century's most watched animes overseas, it was ranked 16th, a great placement considering the hundreds of Japanese animations produced so far. In Italy, in 1982, Lady Oscar became a huge TV hit. Italian audiences watched the series as a soap opera, which attracted children and adults likewise, and they got extremely emotional with Andre and Oscar's deaths, like a new version of a classical Romeo and Juliet. The series' success created a Lady Oscar product's fever, and reruns in subsequent years turned the anime into a cult series. In the 1980s, the success of Lady Oscar and other Japanese animations on TVs in Italy, France, and Spain was so big that the governments enacted laws enforcing children's shows broadcasters to exhibit at least 20% of nationally produced, produced cartoons or movies creating a market reserve against anime, which lasts to the date. Attesting the enduring popularity of Lady Oscar, the series remastered version has been recently broadcasted across Latin America. The most recent rerun is taking place right now in Chile. The story of the Rose of Versailles caught the attention of French directors Jacques Demy, then acclaimed by films like The Umbrellas of Cherbourg and The Young Girls of Rochefort. 
Produced in 1979, Lady Oscar is a live action movie totally shot in France with English dialogues and Western cast. Although it was not a commercial success, in the years after the Miss passing, Lady Oscar became one of his most reappraised films. Demi died of AIDS in 1990 at the age of 59. Contrary to all expectations, the popularity of the Rose of Versailles has spanned the, the decades. By request of fans, Ryoko Ikeda made additional stories of Beru Bara in 1974, and more recently from 12, from 2013 to 2018, something rare to happen in shoujo manga. Now called Queen of the Comics, Ikeda has already retired from opera singing, but Peru Bara keeps her drawing manga in old age. Peru Bara characters became so popular, so immediately recognizable, that they became icons of Western style of beauty and heroic romanticism in Japan. Their images are printed in a wide range of products, and even Japan's post has already honored the Rose of Versailles in several occasions, recognizing its lasting influence and relevance in modern Japanese culture. In 2008, Yoko Ikeda received from French ambassador Philippe Faure the Medal of Chevalier d'Ordre National de la Légion d'Honneur for her contribution to the French culture. The medal, created by Napoleon in 1802, is the highest merit award from the French government. Thanks to the Rose of Versailles popularity, there was an increase in the diffusion of French culture in Japan and Versailles became the second most visited museum in France and the country's third main tourist attraction, second only to Paris Disneyland and the Louvre, displacing the Eiffel Tower. It is interesting to note how the flow of tourists to Versailles has increased as public opinion on Marie Antoinette has changed. For example, the 1963 guide on the left has 90 pages. In only three pages, there is some information about Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, and there, is, and there are no pictures of them. The 1998 guide on the right has 192 pages. 30% of its content is about Louis XVI and, Mar and Marie Antoinette, and there are five pictures of her. No other king or queen has more pictures in that book than her. And if Marie Antoinette was once the most hated queen in French history, today she is undeniably the most famous and popular of all queens. The most recent exhibition on Marie Antoinette in France was held in Paris shortly before the coronavirus pandemic at the Conciergerie, where she spent her last days. Marie Antoinette, metamorphose of an image, showed exactly how the public opinion on the controversial queen changed over the years through art and media. How much Western Rococo art and culture are widespread in contemporary Japan? The answer is a lot. Exhibitions about 18th century arts, decorative, uh, decorative objects, fashion, and historical personalities are so frequent in Japan that it is difficult to go to all of them. Just by the way of comparison, guess how many exhibits about 18th century or Rococo art have been held in Brazil in the last 10 years? The answer is zero. It's also relevant to point out the great interest the Japanese people have on Rococo fashion. Japan houses several good and well-organized fashion museums. And one of them, KCI, the Kyoto Costume Institute, is considered one of the world's best. All Japanese fashion museums have one aspect in common. Their fashion 
their Western fashion collections start with 18th century pieces. And guess how many fashion museums are there in Brazil? Zero. Recently staged 18th century themed musicals prove how popular Rococo culture is in Japan. For example, Byakuya no Chikai, a Takarazuka Review original production, tells the life of Louis XVI fellow monarch, King Gustav III of Sweden. A famous French Revolution themed musical, The Scarlet Pimpernel, has been staged more times in Japan than on Broadway. It is so appreciated in Japan that not only it was staged by two different troops in 2017, but also received a special treatment by its composers, who created two songs exclusively for the Japanese productions, A Piece of Courage, Hitokakera no Yuki, and Days of Glory, Eiko no Hibi. In Japan, musicals from other countries are produced as well as West End and Broadway musicals. Mozart, a 1999 Austrian musical, had more productions in Japan than in any other country. Another Austrian musical, Marie Antoinette, world premiered in Japan in 2006. Marie Antoinette has been staged more times in Japan than anywhere else, including in 2021, during the coronavirus pandemic. When theaters around the world were closed and thousands of people connected to the industry lost their jobs, Japan bravely kept its theatrical activity going. And finally, 1789, The Lovers of the Bastille, a 2012 French musical, after three seasons, became a theatrical hit in Japan. And guess, just for comparison, how many 18th century themed musicals were staged in Brazil in the last 10 years? Yes, zero. With all that information available for decades in Japan, it didn't take long for a young generation to transform so many references into new trends. That's how the alternative teen Lolita fashion emerged. Without prejudice against Rococo, influenced by manga aesthetics, challenging fast fashion and criticisms from the established fashion industry, 21st century Japanese teenagers made an aesthetic revolution. Despite being drawn to the hype of theatrics of Japan's alternative street fashion waves, Western fashion media initially saw Lolitas as psychologically disturbed girls and misinterpreted their style as an analogy to pedophilia without realizing that Lolitas are actually quite the opposite. Like everything else in Japan, Lolita fashion has rules. Lolitas don't use fashion to attract men or to follow the industry's trends. They use fashion to please themselves. And to be considered a proper Lolita, a girl must wear a petticoat, knee length, round skirt, pure cotton outfits, full of handmade frills, ribbons, ruffles, embroideries, flower and sweet prints, all laming a Rococo and shoujo manga inspired the mirror look. A lace parasol, platform doll style shoes, and a headdress are must-have accessories, and tops and dresses with little or no cleavage are a universal modesty rule among lolitas. As the first generation of teen lolitas became young adults, the Japanese market started to develop a variety of products to suit a whole lolita lifestyle. Soon, Anime Rococo inspired future, home linings and accessories began to be sold in Japan. A trend usually mistaken with Lolita overseas is the Himegyaru or princess girl fashion. This is a very common mistake since both Lolita and Himegyaru 
are two fashion styles inspired by Rococo aesthetics and the girls manga. But in many aspects, Himegaru are different, almost opposite from Lolita's. Himegaru aim to look sexier, older and more ostentatious than Lolita's. Because of that, they wear shorter skirts, tight fit dresses and low cleavage tops. Differently from Lolita's, who prefer platform, comfortable shows, Himegaru's love stiletto high heels, especially sandals and pumps. To achieve a glam, rich look, they also like baroque prints, synthetic fabrics, faux fur, and bling, glittery, shiny accessories. While Lolitas are inspired by shepherdesses idealized by Rousseau's naturalism, like in Toile de Jouy prints or Rococo porcelain figurines, Himegardos are inspired by Versailles courtesans and shoujo manga princesses. Very tall, curly hairdos called Antoinette, because of Marie Antoinette's manga looks, decorated with big ribbons, pearls, or, or crystal tiaras, and extreme high makeup with circle lenses and long false eyelashes and extra long false nails over decorated with crystals and resin flowers are typical Himegado features. And here you can see a sample of Japanese modern Rococo fashion produced by Jesus Diamanti, one of the Himegado's preferred brands. The mix of rock music with Rococo fashion in Japan resulted in a new type of rock metal style named the Visual K. Visual K is a musical genre and beyond that, a subculture which grew out of a tangled mix of glam rock, punk and new wave influences combined with kabuki theater and shoujo manga. Visual K emerged on the Japanese alternative scene in the 1980s with bands like X Japan and De Langer. Over time, the style became popular and record labels made Visual K mainstream with bands like L'Arc en Ciel, Luna C, and individual performers like Miyavi and Gak. Here are pictures of Versailles Philharmonic Quintet a band formed in 2007 that has performed all over the world, including in Brazil. In the 21st century, Japanese Rococo pop, pop culture started to appeal to young people overseas. In 2002, director Sofia Coppola was in Tokyo shooting Lost in Translation. She witnessed Lolita fashion phenomenon at its peak and decided that her next movie would be about Marie Antoinette. Released in 2006, Coppola's Marie Antoinette was produced by Columbia Sogni Pictures, American Zotrope, and Toho. The script was based on Antonia Fraser's 2001 biography, Marie Antoinette, The Journey. The movie showed much more Versailles lifestyle and fashion than Marie Antoinette's life. It helped to popularize Rococo aesthetics, for which it received the Oscars for best art direction. The Converse sneaker scene is a reference to the 21st century teenagers who made Lolita fashion happen in Japan and to the fact that Marie Antoinette was herself a teenager queen. And it is amazing to realize how many young people all around the world and from different cultural backgrounds have identified themselves with Japanese teenager lolitas. And to the critics who said years ago that Lolita fashion was just a fad, guess what? 30 years after Lolita appeared in Japan, it still continues to influence fashion in the West. And this is how 18th century history, Rococo art, 
Enlightenment philosophy and Marie Antoinette converged in Japan into the great shoujo manga romance, The Rose of Versailles, which started Japan's modern romantic Baroque culture and ultimately inspired the revolutionary and influential Lolita fashion phenomenon. And so I end today's presentation. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for your attention. If you enjoyed this presentation, please consider subscribing to Abademi's courses on Japanese history and culture. Wow, oh, that was a great presentation. Thank you very much for this amazing moment of teaching and learning, Professor Sato. And thanks everyone for dedicating a time to listen, learn and reveal aspects of Japanese culture. We truly really hope you've enjoyed this presentation and we also hope to see you next time. So, see you. Bye.